So we, we discussed cratering a little bit last time. Um, and I guess I'll start with these historic impacts on Earth. Um, so if you look around the planet's surface, there's not a lot of cratering that we see, especially compared to something like the moon. But we do see evidence of large impacts. And so here's one, I've never been to it, but maybe some of you have, Meteor Crater in Arizona. Uh, here it is in a satellite image, and then here we are closer to the surface. And, you know, it's big craters like this that are easiest to find, but there are small craters um, that are harder to find. And they're just, they're simply harder to find because Earth has erosion that gets rid of these features over time, right? And so the only the big ones survive long enough that process of erosion for us to find them. Um, the other historic impact that you're probably familiar with is the uh, impact that was related to the uh, Cretaceous extinction when most of our dinosaur friends went their separate way. And this actually hit um, in the Yucatan Peninsula and the, the crater is called uh, Chicxulub and it's about this size. So if you're more familiar with Texas than Mexico, I guess. Uh, so uh, in other words, an extremely large crater. And it was actually hard to find. And I don't think that it was actually found until some time in the late eighties, early nineties. Um, we can see the evidence of it today because this massive impact uh, compressed the material uh, that's left in the earth's crust there into these areas of sort of uh, kind of concentric rings. So you can play around with making craters if you, I don't know, get out a bowl of flour or something and then drop marbles into it from different heights. You'll see that different shapes of craters get formed. And some of them are really simple like this one, but sometimes they'll have a little ring or multiple rings inside. Uh, we'll talk about this more on Monday. But anyway, those rings can be seen here and not um, in terms of the material measured directly, but this is actually more gravity, um, stronger gravity measured in these regions that helped us map out the shape of this crater. So pretty strange, but because there's more mass in these regions where it was crushed together uh, by, the or by the meteor, then there's more gravity there too. And the reason it was really hard to find is because for one thing, it occurred on the boundary between um, land and sea, right? So part of it is underwater and so just wasn't easy to find. And the other reason is because of erosion. And the, uh, the way that we did eventually find it was by these cenotes, which are basically little pools. Um, and these are peppered around the area at the north of the Yucatan. And the um, cenotes are, you know, kind of peppered all over the landscape, but especially you can see this ring here, and that's the edge of that crater. So that's what helped us find this crater. And pretty cool that we were able to pinpoint um, the crater that uh, came from the meteor impact that killed the dinosaurs. And they didn't just die on impact, right? Um, the impact caused um, a lot of um, material to be blasted into the atmosphere and this led to it becoming very dark. Um, so there wasn't as much sunlight available for plants to use. And so basically a lot of animals died of starvation. Uh, the other thing that happened was that a lot of CO2 entered the atmosphere due to this explosion and um, acid rain was also a big problem. So many different effects that are sort of not directly related to the impact, but um, just kind of knock on effects. Okay, so those are the historic impacts that maybe you've heard of before. And I just want to ask, you know, related to our question last time about how cratering um, can tell us about the age of a body, which one of these regions looks oldest? All right, so yeah, B has more craters, meaning that it's had more time to be hit by meteors. And so B would be the older region. Um, what about this idea that sometimes geological activity might fill in craters? We call that resurfacing. So the idea is um, which one of these regions looks like it might be partially resurfaced by maybe volcanoes? All right, I'm seeing mostly C. I would agree with that. There's some surface of C that looks like it's been smoothed over and in that time, maybe it's seen small impacts 
but there's no large impacts in that area. All right. So um, a different sort of question. Would you expect that the Earth or the Moon should get hit by different amounts of asteroids, meteors, or the same? Well, I would have said C, the same amount, but that's, I guess, because I was thinking hit means that it entered the vicinity of any, of, at all, right? So yeah, I totally agree. The atmosphere of Earth is able to destroy most of the objects that would otherwise hit Earth. The moon doesn't have that protective layer. So we see the effects of the cratering, but in general, like we wouldn't expect a greater number to fly toward the moon than to fly toward the Earth. They're in the same region of space. They should encounter about the same number and type of uh, impactors. But those impactors aren't all treated the same way. And so just like you said, um, the atmosphere is a really important factor here. So I guess um, in the chat, go ahead and rank which one of these you think should have the most to least amount of craters and why is that the case? I'll give you about a minute to type out your ideas. All right, yeah, so based on the density and I guess total amount of the atmospheres, you might expect more impacts on Mercury or the moon. And then you might expect Mars would be hit more often than Earth, which would be hit more often than Venus in terms of an actual impact on its surface. Uh, because Venus's atmosphere would burn the heck out of those and Earth's atmosphere would burn most of them as well. Um, okay, and then the other side of this question is how many craters do we actually see on the surface when we map out the surface? And so in addition to atmosphere, to answer that question, you'd also have to consider the amount of geological activity that we see on all those planets. So as we go through our study of the other planets, um, we'll look at how the surfaces of Venus and Mars are shaped by geological activity that's happening in different amounts on both of those planets compared to Earth. 